So I think this list that I've made of common mistakes just kept on growing. Every interaction that I've ever had in sport or experience I've had from whether it's professional, even during my journey making it as a professional, and now working with whether it's athletes, even I would say in business, I see this happening in business and in corporations where leaders and even employees in those corporations are making some of these mistakes. But I'm going to focus it mostly on sport. And if you want to adjust it into business, then you definitely can as well. So from my experience, I have literally felt every single one of these and I've done every single one of these. I've made every single mistake. And the reason behind this podcast is so that it can help fast track you. I, I don't write this list or give this list by saying don't do any of these. I actually am a proponent of making mistakes. So leaning into those mistakes is important because that's how we learn best. But if you don't do it quickly enough, then you're probably going to miss the opportunity to grow and get to a place where you want to as quickly as you can. And I'm not saying that to try and speed up progression because it does take time in order to develop things, but it's good to have instruments or or systems in place so that when you do make a mistake, you recognize you've made that mistake and then you can move past it. You can get to that place where you want to be much faster, which is growth, improvement, development, etc. So this isn't discounting to make zero mistakes or trying to make zero mistakes. This is actually about just recognizing the ones that you're making and then trying to get to a place where you can put in some action to progress, grow, learn, and then achieve what you're setting yourself out to go and achieve in the first place. So I think the first thing to do is to just perhaps grab a pen and paper to write down maybe some of the mistakes that you felt you've made recently, see if they add up. Maybe write down some of these that are going to come up. If you're maybe listening to this whilst driving, then obviously don't write whilst driving, but just make a mental note as well. And then just think about some of the actions that you can take to maybe change one or two of these mistakes that you're making. It's not about thinking, oh my God, I'm making so many mistakes. Take one, take two, and then try to change your perspective, your outlook, how you deal with them moving forward. Don't try to change everything. Just prioritize which one you maybe are doing most often, the mistake you're making most often, and try and change that one. So let's get straight into it. The first one that I've got is lack of structure in your training. So when people go out, and and like I said, I've done all of these, and I went into my training, whether it was physical actually I would say my physical training I, I learned pretty early on how to put in a structure but one area where I didn't get it right was in my skills I didn't develop a structured plan for developing my skills when I hit about 18 I then started to implement a bit more of a structure and I saw a massive shift so having a lack of structure in your training can really leave you feeling demotivated. You may not feel like you're making any progress because you don't really know where that progress is coming from. You don't know what training to do next. You don't know where to go from day to day or even week to week, month to month, year to year. And having a structured plan is really important. And one of the areas I'll get onto later is about goal setting. But in order to set that structured goal, you will want to look at what is your long-term goal? What is that end goal? And then work backwards. And then what would the training be to get there? You may find that you need to speak to someone. You may need to speak to a coach. You may need to speak to a colleague, a friend, a teammate, anyone to perhaps help you out in structuring what it is that you want to, to get to. So defining that goal, setting out what are the, the, the structures or the attributes that that goal is going to need to require. Is it physical strength and endurance? Is it perhaps a mentality? Is it some skills? What skills do you need to prioritize? And then from there, you can start to build out a structure and actually build something that you can use on a day-to-day -day basis that builds a routine. You can sit into that routine and you can just follow it until you start to achieve those goals. And bear in mind, structures of training change all the time. I think my physical training right now is a smorgasbord. It is constantly changing. I am changing the way I train from sort of, I'd say about a three-month period 
and I'm trialing out new things. I've got a pretty good routine that I've got now, but this has been since retiring from professional sport, I've started to just dabble in different modalities of training, mainly because I don't have to be hyper-specific to the sport that I'm trying to play. So with your structured plan and your training, make sure that it is structured towards the specificity of the sport that you are trying to achieve. So if you are a marathon runner and you want to be high endurance don't structure your training to be some sort of bodybuilder-esque type physique you obviously want to build your structure and your training around what it is you're trying to achieve so be specific in what you're doing but also recognize that that structure will change over time it will develop and that's a good thing because it also keeps you interested, it keeps you motivated and and perhaps even disciplined because when you go into something new and exciting, it just rejuvenates that motivation. It just completely brings in a new perspective and can, can light that fire. Moving on, focusing on outcomes and results far too much. For sure, it is the thing that people will recognize you for in your sport and what you're trying to achieve. But if you are focused purely on the outcomes, then you're only going to feel let down when they don't actualize. I said this in previous podcasts, and I say it all the time, that sport is a game of failure. It is a sport where we continuously fail, and it's our ability to pick ourselves up and come back again and again and again that defines who we are, our character, and what we want to achieve. So recognize that you are going to have failures in those outcomes and you're not always going to achieve those things that you want to. So focusing on it is really tough in trying to progress yourself and trying to actually grow. It's the process. And I used to hate the word process. I used to really find the word process a struggle. But really, if you think about it, it's the day-to-day actions. It's the the in-the-moment, in-the-present-moment things that matter the most that's what you can control. You can solely control that and bringing as much into your control as you possibly can will bring a level of confidence. It will reduce that anxiety, fatigue, pressure that you may feel when you don't have things in your control and you're trying to control those things that you can't control. And outcome and result is one of them. It is one of the things that we cannot control. So don't spend too much time focusing on it. Yes, it's great to achieve and it's great to get there, but focus on the things that are going to hopefully allow you to have the best outcome, which could be your physical presence. It could be your physical attributes, your training, your your mindset, your effort that you're putting in the skills that you have, all of those things that are in your control, whether you're training them or not, those are things that you can stay 100% in control of. So focus on those. Next up, failure being fatal. When we fail, it is gut-wrenching and we don't achieve something. It can hurt so much. But not having this fear of failure is is something that comes from essentially this idea of, of, of perfectionism. And I've spoken about perfectionism before. As I mentioned before at the start, having mistakes and making mistakes and having those failures is a real big part of this growth. So not wanting to step into an area where we may fail is, is what really stems from our perfectionism. It's, it's essentially saying, why would I try going into this thing where I risk being imperfect when actually if I don't try and I don't go into it, I'm, I'm perfect as I am. The caveat to that is that if you don't step into it and you don't go there, you're never going to grow. You're never going to develop. You need to have that element of failure. Think of it like working out. People will actively go and work out their bodies to an element of failure. They'll push their body with rep after rep and they will fail their body. Yet when it comes to the psychological and the mental side of something, we're so unwilling to go into this area where we risk failure. We risk that fatigue. But what do we do when we have pushed our body to a a limit and we've, we've fatigued it and we've completely worked it to a element of failure? We go and rest. We go and rest and recover and then we come back stronger so that we can go into a tougher challenge, which may be a tougher workout, a tougher physical piece of training. And the same goes for our mind. We need to be able to go into that place of failure, come back, recover, and then go again. And that's where the adventure is. And that's where the 
the journey becomes so enjoyable about developing your mental fortitude and your strength in the sport activity that you're trying to develop in. Next up, overanalyzing your performances. It's very common to just come off the field having had a performance, whether it's good, bad, and just overanalyzing it, just really going to a place where you're constantly ruminating what's happened over and over again. I've done this. I always do this. It's, the, it's usually the bad decisions that we feel we've made, the decisions that we have done or not done, and we, we regret and we feel that sense of, oh, I should have done this. Being able to quickly analyze and get past that performance is a real skill. So having a framework where you just quickly say to yourself, like, what have I done well? What have I not done so well? And then what action am I going to do to make this right? Because ultimately that performance is gone. We cannot control that anymore. So it's what we do next that's most important. Getting to that next place, getting to that next performance and that training where we can put things right. So dwelling on it, overanalyzing it, is not going to serve us because we're just going to spiral into an area of self-doubt, maybe self-deprecation, and not actually get some positivity out of what we've done and where we want to go. So don't overanalyze it. Don't just dwell on it too long. Be real quick. Check what it is that you, you did well, not so well, and what do you want to do to get better in the future so that you can move on and get going. Next up is listening to too many people. So I do see many young athletes that are constantly changing what they're doing by listening to too many people, especially coaches. And I have spoken about having a good filter. So in the last podcast, 10 Habits of Successful Athletes, I spoke about having a good filter. And this is where if you're listening to too many people and you take on all of that information, you're constantly changing what you're doing. And you need a little bit of time to develop what you're doing. So if you go and try out a new technique in your sport let's say and you have two coaches you might have someone that's your club coach you might have even a representative coach like a county coach here in the UK or you might have additionally a school coach so you may have three coaches that you're working with right they're all going to have their own different ways of dealing with things and and coaching you as an athlete so if one of them gives you something to work on and you start to see it working or you start to see it working, then you have a session where it just doesn't work, or you perhaps even do a session where a coach that hasn't given you that new thing to work on sees you doing it and questions it and actually says, well, why are you doing that? Why would, why don't you go and try this? And then you listen to that and change. You don't know whether that's actually knocking you off a path towards the place you want to go to, the development that you're seeking, because you do have to have a period of time where you're working towards something and it takes time to develop. It takes that failure. It takes that mistakes to get there. So if you're taking too quick a time or if you're, you're giving yourself too short a period of time to develop and then you're just hearing someone else's opinion and then just changing it straight away, you may not actually develop at all. You may not get that or really slow it down because you're constantly changing. So when you're listening to too many people, it's it can be difficult. So it's worthwhile just listening to everyone, yes, but then having that filter. Have that filter where, or the courage to say to that coach, look, my other coach has given me this. I, I feel really strongly that this is working. I'd like it if you could just jump on board with me. Then you're ultimately putting it back on the coach and it's up to the coach then to figure out whether they are happy to go along with that. Maybe they communicate with the other coach. You set up a, a call or a text message exchange so that the two coaches can exchange ideas. You ultimately want to have them both on the same page. If you other if you don't do that, you perhaps leave a place where the coaches because every coach wants to to feel like they're the one that comes up with the ideas and they're the ones that make that big change. And that's a challenge. But if you can bring everyone on the same page, the ultimate goal for each of those coaches is to develop you as the athlete. So their ultimate goal should feel about developing you. I think of a film, um, I think it's called Fighter with Mark Wahlberg, a great film about Mickey Ward. And there's a part in the film where his, he's got a new trainer, and but his brother was his, his old trainer. And he really likes both trainers. He really worked well with his brother, but his brother's got a really tough history. And then there's this part in the film where 
Mark Wahlberg, who's playing Mickey Ward, just says, look, I want everyone. I want all of us to work on the same page. And eventually he gets everyone to work on the same page and then he goes into a fight to win. And that's really what you want. You want everyone that's coaching you, especially if you have multiple coaches, to work with you on the same page. And if you are listening to too many people but not communicating that it's confusing you, that's where challenges fall in. So try to bring everyone on the same page. Try to make sure you do have a good filter if you're not willing to have that conversation. But I would encourage you to have that conversation with your coaches, with those people. It takes some courage and bravery and maybe an uncomfortable conversation to have and to feel, but that's where we want to be. That's the things that we want to try and, and get to. So yeah, I, I don't have much more on that. Fi uh, next up, we have not setting long-term goals. So if you are setting basically day-by-day -day goals, great, you're living in the moment, but what's it working towards? And just leaning on previously what I spoke about, you ultimately want to have this big, shiny, big, scary goal. And that is a great place to have because that gives you an idea of what you want to achieve. But along with that, think about what that person looks like, how they train, how they sound, and everything that's going to be needed from that, and then start to work backwards. So if it's, say, you want to be a, an England footballer, what does that person need to have? What are the attributes that that person needs to have? And then what are some of the things that you can do to work towards it? It might be much simpler than that, and it might be something not as far in the future. It might be just a year in the future. So where is it? What is it? A team you want to get into, a, an academy you want to strive for, uh, maybe just even getting back into a sport, maybe getting a routine going, might be just getting back to fitness. Whatever that long-term outcome is and that long-term goal, work backwards from there, but have that long-term goal, something that you're striving for, so that all the different goals that go in between it, those short and medium goals, they may chop and change because the types of training that you do, the structures you have, they might change, the place in the world that you are, that might change but ultimately be driven by that long-term goal. It's really, really important to have one. Next up, not investing in your body and your mind and thinking that you're invincible. I fell into this trap essentially a lot of the time, but I actually think I was fortunate when I was younger that I got a big, bad injury early on in my career, when I was about 16 years old, I had my first ever stress fracture in my spine. And it taught me that my body was not invincible. Also, the fact that of my condition, and you can go and find my episode about my condition, my story, that also taught me that I'm not invincible. However, I do see a lot of athletes that do think they're invincible. And your body is a tool and a resource, and so is your mind, that you only get one of. So if you do not look after it and you do not invest in it, then you're leaving a lot to be desired. You're you're leaving a lot out there and you're going to eventually run into an issue that you may not be equipped for. And the reason I say that is if you do look at every athlete that has ever, even the top and the best athletes that have the best care, the best physios, the best training, the best nutrition, everything alongside that, they, they get injured because sport is tough. Sport is hard. And physical activity is hard. Yes, it builds us and it grows us, but it does damage us. So it's important that you put in place some practices, some techniques, some methods that look after your body. And that can be around your recovery, your warm-ups, your nutrition, your sleep, your hydration, everything around that. Put in good practices that you're investing in your body. I promise you it's the one thing you will not regret, especially when you get older and get down the line. I look at at myself now I'm 32 years old and I've picked up an injury this year I picked up a small hamstring tear and I regularly get them it's just one of those things that I seem to keep getting but I recover from them pretty quickly I, I pick them up really quickly and then I recover from them really quickly and I put that down to the fact that when I was 15 16 I learned how to physically train my body early and I built this huge foundation of solid training that now when I go to train I'm not going into a gym or a weights room or even just going out on the road or in my bike whatever physical activity that I'm doing and not being able to 
work out and have a structured plan, but also see growth and development. And, and it doesn't hurt. It's not going to knock me down for weeks on end, especially if I haven't, say, run for weeks. I'm not necessarily going to feel too sore or it's going to be tough to recover from because I've built that base of training that's now been a great investment for my body. And I'm now playing essentially the long game where I want to have longevity in what I do. I want to be playing golf. I want to be picking up my grandkids, my kids when I'm 60, 70, 80. I really want to be active when I'm older. I want to be doing runs, cycles, swims all the way into those those years. So investing in your body, investing in the recovery, that's super important. And again, invest in your mind, train your mind, whether it's doing little tasks or like Sudokus or or a Wordle, the, the game Wordle that people are doing. It keeps your mind going, but also doing things like challenging yourself, going into challenging situations, putting yourself out of comfort zones so that you're constantly rejuvenating that mental practice and that feeling of, of growth and moving forward. So invest, it's the one thing that you will not regret. Next up, overtraining. People do overtrain very early on. There was, I, I listened to a podcast by Andrew Huberman. It was fascinating about young athletes and young boys who have a essential predisposition for working insanely hard when you're young. And it's true, you do. When you when you see young boys, they, they work out and it's because there's a chemical reaction. And I'm not going to go into it because I'm not well equipped enough to know what it actually is definitively. But Andrew Huberman of the Huberman Lab uh, the Andrew Huberman podcast. It was a great episode and I cannot remember which one it was, but talks about this feeling that young boys get when they push themselves really hard. It's, it feels good. And I remember being young and, and actually like every time I worked out, like working out to the point where I literally am collapsing on the floor and it felt great. The thing that I did wrong essentially was I did that every day. I just did it so much and overtrained. And now I live in a place where my training works around zone two training. So again, people like Rich Roll, Peter Atia, these guys talk a lot about, and, and also Andrew Huberman, they talk a lot about zone two training. And if you're wondering what that is, go and look it up. It's a brilliant uh, form of training. I spoke a lot with Zach Bitter on the podcast. So if you type in Raising Your Game, Zach Bitter, you'll get that episode of the podcast up. And he spoke speaks a lot about how to run far or have a huge amount of endurance zone two training is what you need and now instead of training like every day really hard i think about four out out of my six workouts are at a pace where i can have an easy conversation and it's not challenging it's not over tiring but it's still good training it's still building a solid base it's not every day that i'm doing an a workout where I'm smashing myself to pieces and then ultimately falling into an area where I'm burnt out, I'm injured. I had the podcast on how to avoid burnout, uh, episode 99, which is worth listening to about how to not overtrain and how to avoid burnout and just recognize those symptoms. So having having that sense of overtraining and, and overtraining too much can lead to burnout. And it's one common mistake that I do see athletes doing. They just smash themselves far too early far too hard, far too early without bringing in that recovery. It's not about not working hard. It's just about working a little bit smarter. Next up, high expectations. Our expectations as athletes are killing us. And just in general in the world, like our, our willingness to set these unrealistic high expectations of each other. And then along with it, the judgments when we don't reach those expectations are crazy. We're putting out so much of an idea of what we should be based off a lot of what's going on in society. And then when we don't achieve those expectations, it impacts our self-worth. It impacts how we feel about ourselves. And that's not fair on us. That's not fair on you to set these crazy expectations of what you need to achieve. And then if you don't reach them, only feel like you've not, you're not worth anything. So sadly and, and weirdly, the, the goal is to essentially set lower expectations to lower those expectations and recognize you are human you are imperfect you do have permission to be imperfect and if you don't reach those expectations that's okay don't worry about it but keep try keep trying keep striving keep going through your process going through your training that's the things that you can control you can expect of yourself to work hard to have a positive mindset but 
outside of that, those expectations of what you should achieve and where you should be, that's not really in your control. It's not guaranteed. So don't necessarily go and strive for those all the time and, and give yourself permission to fail, to mess up and, and don't judge yourself so harshly. That's one bit of advice I can give on that. Next up is a bit of a quirky one, but essentially not having a purpose in what you're doing. Now, very tough to get this early on, but what I would encourage you is to think about why you're going into what you're doing. So even if you're a youngster, why am I playing this sport? Why am I trying to achieve these dreams? What does it all mean? What do I want it to mean? And not looking at necessarily the extrinsic motivations that go with it. So the fame, the status, the money, the what it might mean to achieve or being in a good team. But look at the intrinsic motivations. So what is my reasons behind? Is it because I want to do this because maybe someone told me I couldn't when I was younger? Maybe this is something that is in my family and it will define my family and maybe I can dedicate myself to doing it for my family. Maybe you do it for yourself. Maybe you just want to do it because it's going to live out the values and being a person that you want to be. Ultimately, having that purpose behind what you're doing, if you can do that early on, then when you're faced with challenges and obstacles and self-doubts and moments when you perhaps want to quit, having that big purpose behind you creates a sense of being bigger than yourself. And that's super important, especially like I mentioned in those areas and those moments of doubt and times when you want to quit because those are going to come. So having a big purpose, having a big reason why you're doing it keeps you going. And I know now looking back on my career, I did have a bigger purpose. My purpose was to inspire others. I genuinely wanted to achieve what I achieved so that not from a, well, maybe from an egotistical point of view that I could kind of turn around and go, look, if I can do it, then you can do it. But ultimately to get to a place where I'm doing what I'm doing now, which is telling people, if I can do this thing with what I had, then what the hell can you do? It just takes a shift in mindset. It takes understanding where you've come from, the stories that you're telling yourself, the obstacles you have to overcome and feeling proud of yourself. I wanted to get to a place where I felt proud of the person that I was and the person that I'm going to be. I read a quote recently is that you want to you want to essentially have the 80 year old version. Can you be someone that your 80 year old self and your 10 year old self are proud of? And that really was not something that I was thinking about, but now looking back, I actually wanted to become someone that I was proud of. And that was a purpose. That's a real big purpose. That is something that is not limited or restricted by the outcomes, the the results that I get, but is when I'm in challenge, in success, it's defined by the person that I want to be. And that is the purpose. That is the reason why I'm doing it. And then from that comes a bigger goal, which is how can I take what I've learned, what I'm doing and help others. And that's what life is about, serving others, bringing whatever lessons that you learn, whether it's for people you know, your family, your kids, your future kids, your grandkids, being able to pass on those stories, those lessons that you've learned. That's really what it's about. And having your purpose early on will help you get to that place. So have a purpose. It will really help in those challenging moments. Next up, I've got a last couple here. Needing everything to be perfect right now. Needing to be where you want to be right now and wanting something too soon. If you're interested in perfectionism, it's an area that I'm fascinated with, then I, I encourage you to go over to episode 129 and that Paradox of Perfectionism podcast really talks about this whole idea of needing to be perfect and where that essentially may stem from. But one of the common mistakes, again, linked in with a lot of what I've spoken about is this idea of needing to be at a place where you're not currently at right now and thinking that you needed to be there yesterday because it takes time. All of this, everything that you're working towards, it takes time to develop. Yes, you're going to have mistakes in the short term. It's going to suck. It's going to be tough, but it takes time. And I promise you, when you get to a place where you can look back and go, whoa, look where I've come from. I Look where I was just a year ago, maybe a few weeks ago. I've actually gotten to a place and I've achieved some of the things that I wanted to do on my to-do list and to-be list. But I've actually done them now and I'm in a better place and I feel good about myself for having done that. 
But if we're living in this place in the future where it's like, I need to be here now, I should have been there and I, I that person is there instead of me, then we're going to really damage that self-worth of ours and we don't want that. We want to be in a place where we recognize that it's a process and it's going to take time and, and that's what you want. So don't feel you need to be perfect right now. And I'm going to finish off with this last one, which is always choosing the negative first. One real insightful moment in my career was when one of my coaches asked me, how do you think you've done? And it was after, I think, like a, a game or a training session. And the first thing that I said was, oh, I haven't done this, this, this. And I reeled off within the space of about 10 seconds, five things that I didn't think I hadn't done. And he stopped me, whoa, 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 whoa. I want you to tell me the good things. And it was one of the things that shifted my perspective moving forward, which was, and it doesn't happen every time and it's not perfect every time, was that every time you look at what you've done or you come out of something, asking yourself, what have I done well? Looking for the positive first. The negatives will come and they will swarm us, but we need to actively decide to choose the positives first. So think about what it is that you've done well and you're doing well and you're you're feeling confident in and write those down, remember them, get them out of your head and onto paper and then allow yourself to be your critic. You will criticize yourself for sure, but actively choosing the positive option first will change the way you start to view and interact with the world. You'll find that even conversations with people, you can ask people, how are you? And most people will read off like, yeah, I'm busy, I'm doing this. But you will then start to, I've started to shift going, no, I asked, how are you? What, what's going well in your life? What's going on? And that starts to shift you into a person completely different, into maybe someone you want to be. You maybe want to have that positive outlook. We, I can't imagine many of us want to have this negative outlook in life and really looking at it in a in a negative light. So why choose that? You, but it's going to take us actively to pursue the positive option to get to that place. We're so hard on ourselves. We, we it's seven times easier. It's that we're seven times more likely to think of a negative story than a positive one about ourselves. So we need to be active in telling ourselves positive things around ourselves because those are the things that are that progress us and make us feel good about ourselves, but we're battered down by these negative thoughts. So changing your perspective and trying to seek the positive outlook first is super important. So there we go. Those are, what have I given, 12 of the most common mistakes that I see in athletes. I'm sure there's more, definitely more that people come up with. If you think of any mistakes that you have seen, come and interact. Find me over on Instagram at Lewis Hatchet, Twitter, Lewis underscore Hatchet, TikTok, Lewis underscore Hatchet. Go to the website, lewishatchet.com, send a message, comment on this podcast, and let us know some of the mistakes that maybe you have made, you're seeing being made, and yeah, remember to subscribe to the game plan newsletter, that weekly email that comes out with one actionable tip. You can head over to lewishatchet.com and you can subscribe straight away on the homepage. That is where I'm just going to give one tip every Friday so that you can put into action some mindset, well-being and more changes into your game. So thanks again for listening and I will see you guys next time. Mm -hmm.